This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Don't let your kids watch it! Hey there, Artie! Alright, I guess we continue the story. Let's see what happens next. There was no way I'd be able to sleep. When she hung up the phone like that, I realized for the first time what kind of a situation I was in, as well as the only ally who would support me was. I waited for ba with bated breath for Shion to calm down and call me back. What would I do if the phone rang while I was sound asleep? No matter how long I waited, however, it never rained. Exhausted, whenever my mind started to wander, I would jolt awake as though I heard the phone ring. In the end, I brought the cordless phone with me into my futon and I went to sleep with it in my arms. Though it still didn't amount to anything. Morning came, and by that time, I was pretty sure she wasn't calling back. That was when a fierce drowsiness assailed me. I slapped myself in the face a few times. Then I went to the washroom and washed my face, which was something I usually didn't do. That wasn't enough either, so I even brushed my teeth. After that, I was finally wide awake. When, when Keiichi brushes his teeth in the morning, that's how you know he's serious. When Mom saw how strange I was acting, her eyes went wide. What the heck? Keiichi brushed his teeth in the morning? Keiichi, it's Saturday. No, it's not. Oh, sorry, Rana. The thing was, uh, the Girl Scouts came by, but they didn't have any dosi, any samos. No, they didn't have any trefoils. <laughs> I was very upset. Nope, I just didn't get my shortbread cookies. <laughs> Be nice, Rena. Please. I felt utterly shattered, and I still hadn't picked myself up back up this morning. And for precisely that reason, Rena's honest smile was a sight for sore eyes. Yo. Oh, hey, hey. <laughs> she looks tired. We had to call every number in the world last night looking for the mayor. Mion had gone home early yesterday with a hangover, but she didn't look too good this morning either. Her usual cheerfulness was completely buried in shadow. That's not healthy, Mion. Granted, I'm probably going to be going to bed at like 3 tonight. Actually, no, probably not. Well, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Busted! She read the first Warrior Cats book, so she had to read all the Warrior Cats books. 88 books later, it was time to go to school. I joked, trying to shake off my sleepiness. I was trying to be considerate. To this day, I have never stayed up the whole night. I've never pulled an all-nighter, even in college. I did stay up till like four one day in college, but I still went to bed. I'm trying to imagine. That would be so weird to just not have that moment of like unconsciousness to like process the next day. However, neither Mio nor Rena smiled. In fact, they didn't even pay attention. Rena's expression immediately darkened. <laughs> What happened to Mayor McCheese? Even in the classroom, which was normally bursting with bright, joking voices, seemed filled with a different sort of murmur today. Oh, uh, hey, said <laughs> He's old! Well, most of the village is old. I think the only person in the town that's my age, like IRL, would be Takano and then the teacher. That's why teacher is best girl. Oh, 
what I wouldn't give for that. What do you mean, like you, Rika? Rika, did you pull an all-nighter too? Did you get lost on the way home from the Chuck E. Cheese? Keep it in, Rena. Getting lost is only cute because children like Rika do it. A worn-out old man getting lost isn't moe in the slightest. While my mind entertained dumb thoughts like that, our teacher arrived. Everyone rushed to their seats. Hey, girl! Good morning! The class greeting was normal, but the atmosphere in the room was heavy. さんが夜遅くになっても、お家に帰ってこなかったのだそうです。やい、わお、やい、フリーピープルミッシンナウ。皆さんの中で昨日村長さんを見た人はいる。ダッツイット、ダッツイットディエックス。ウィケスタケチ
Satoshi. I've heard that name before. He was... right, he disappeared because of last year's curse. The conversation was happening in the seat next to me, so I could hear it clearly. Did he go out to see the FNAF movie? Oh yeah, he he definitely went to see the FNAF movie. A year before it came out. Yeah, he went to the Ran away, huh? I wasn't that interested in the reason, which seemed understandable in this case. Everyone else who disappeared had their own reasons, too. Either they were still on the run because they were criminals, or they were a corpse that couldn't be found. It's not like any of them suddenly disappeared into thin air for no reason. But, they disappeared. Someone disappeared whenever the curse took a life, as if by design. They may have had various understandable reasons, but they all still disappeared. From that point of view, it really might have been a demon in a way this time. The mayor's disappearance was the first such incident without a clear reason behind it. Of course, coming to that realization didn't help to resolve anything. Oh, are we making curry again? <laughs> Normally, Rena's lunch would have been devoured immediately, but today there was still a ton left. That wasn't because Rena's lunch didn't taste good or anything, though. It's amazing how Rena can simultaneously be, like, the best and also absolutely terrifying. So Togo dips her chopsticks into Rena's bento box and eats bits of food out one after the other. Does Rena just make lunch for the whole class or just her friends? Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm. Yeah, the dried apricots are top tier, Rena. <laughs> Pumpkin croquettes? What the heck? Rena, how much time do you spend every morning making these fancy schmancy ones? I just smear peanut butter and jam on bread and call it a good day. <laughs> You know what? That could make for a nice thumbnail. Did Satoko dislike pumpkin? Regardless, she forced herself to smile and shoved more in her mouth. Now we're all out our things we don't like. Everyone knew. Nobody's lunch tasted very good today. Satoko kept shoveling it down, repeating her remark on how good it was. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Run is very sweet until she turns to a hardcore stalker. She really, really hated pumpkin, didn't she? That made it all the more touching to see Satoko's own brand of generosity. I grabbed her head and started stroking it. That's a little weird. Satoko, in a somewhat exaggerated fashion, was bawling, tears streaming down her face. <laughs> so it was like, how dare you? One of these will make a good thumbnail. Rena reached out with her chopsticks, and at the last, the usual lunchtime atmosphere began to return. There was only that was only at our desks, however. Where is Rika? The dark tales of Oyashirasama's curse, which had recurred for five years in a row, didn't cease. The whole classroom remained stuck in this somber mood. Rika got her own lunch. R Rika went to Wendy's. <laughs> Oyashiro-sama's curse had happened for five years straight. Everyone had wanted the previous year to be the last. What was Oyashiro-sama's curse anyway? They were going to build the dam in Hinamizawa. The people building it were bad, so they were cursed. I would admit that much. Still, the dam project was frozen years ago, wasn't it? So why was the curse stubbornly pers persisting? 
Well, when you open the, the portal to hell and summon demons to the world, they ain't going to leave so easily. I hit myself on the cheeks to perk myself back up. Everyone was trying so hard to brighten the mood. I couldn't go straight back to thinking about the curse like that. I forced the grim story out of my head. Driving Oyashiro sama's curse out of my thoughts was actually a good idea. In the end, that meant that I would also be driving away the most terrifying thought of all, that I could be the curse's next target. Well, Keiichi, sometimes girls take longer in the bathroom. Mion had said she was going to wash her hands and left, and she hadn't come back yet. <laughs> she turned her locker sideways so she could take a nap in it, like a coffin. I smiled wryly and let out a sigh. Today was no good. However much we tried to lighten the mood, Fiends always came back to the mayor. It was just a no good day. I had just transferred here recently, so the shock of a curse happening five years running was an unimaginably big one. Maybe I do need to appreciate that. Mayor seems like a nice guy. I see. Mion was in shock, too. Someone disappearing at all, all because of a curse was a very scary thing. If a sacrifice was someone you knew, though, then the shock must be a hundred times worse. So Togo, as if she'd come to the same conclusion, bit her lower lip and looked downward. Rika better not have been having any brewskis. Now that she mentioned it, there were a lot of old people rubbing their prayer beads in fervent gratitude towards Rika-chan during the festival, too. An image of the indulgent elderly came to mind. Had Rika discovered a way to get herself to be pampered like that? Yay, we get the fun music back. Okay. Okay, you're getting a little hyperactive there, Rena. It's a yawn. <laughs> I'm actually with you on that one, Satoko. <laughs> Just the jaws! <laughs> Rika's not going like, Oh my, I'm used to... She's like... It's like, like my old cat. <laughs> Rena's handy at times like these. Mm. I finally managed a heartfelt laugh. Oh, right. I'm on day duty today, aren't I? I need to go water the flower garden. The garden is right outside the teacher's lounge, too, so they can immediately tell if you don't do it right. <laughs> just realized Rena's open mouth could be seen as just a giant tongue getting, like, sticking out. <laughs> Rena was strangling Satoko. I don't think that counts as yawning. You know, Rena is... I can't say it out loud, but she's a notorious boop, isn't she? Really, bro? Hearing Satoko make a weird noise like a chicken being strangled was kind of hilarious, and I couldn't help but laugh. At some point, the classroom had erupted into laughter, too. Maybe Rena was doing it on purpose. Even if she wasn't, this nonsense was a welcome sight. Anyway, let's get over to the flowers while I still have time. Slowly and quietly, I, lest I destroy the room's newfound peace, I left the classroom. Hmm. Why Why are we watering the flowers? What is? What purpose is this going to play in the story? The watering can was hanging up outside the kitchen. This building had originally been an all-male forestry service building, so there was apparently nothing so thoughtful as a garden here before. 
When they decided to have school share the space, they built one there as a modest gesture of appreciation. But, well, the flower bed, it was a little longer than you'd expect. It went all around. It went all over the place. It was so big it, it was so big one would need to refill the watering can five or six times to get it all done. You always had 30 minutes before classes officially ended where students had to clean. Oh, interesting. I mean, I think that's kind of a good thing to teach kid to to it just instill that kind of like, hey, you're using this, you you need to take responsibility and keep it clean. Like I, I see that. I totally get why it would be super annoying when you were actually doing it. But I feel like that's one of those things that you'd probably look back on and be like, that was a good lesson for me to learn. But what do I know? <laughs> she was a... Uh, uh, I was doing this together with a kid who was also thankfully on day duty today. She was in the lowest grade, though, and a full size smaller than even Rika. I couldn't make a kid who would struggle just to lift the full watering can help me with this. If you were placed on day duty with someone who liked the sort of thing, they'd do it all for you, so it'd be cake. Watering can in hand, just as I was about to leave the building, the old man from the forestry office addressed me. That's the teacher's. Water that! That's the important stuff. You can eat it. It's definitely the personal garden of our curry-loving teacher, but... Making students responsible for its upkeep is getting them involved in her personal affairs. I couldn't say that to his face, though, so I gave up and decided to carry out my day duties. <laughs> the sunlight out front was strong. The great chorus of cicadas was strongly underlining how nothing was different for today than yesterday. I passed by the classroom, and I don't know how it happened, but Rena and Satoko were in the middle of a huge melee! While I was gone, the kids had all arranged the desks into a circle, forming a rain while everyone was cheering them on. Yeah, that's how it should be. Once school ended, we would need to easily re we would need to return to reality, where talk of the Elder's disappearance would once again be all over the place. I wanted everyone to forget about everything and have fun, just like yesterday, if only while they were at school. In that sense, Satoko's whirling elbow and Rena's backwards flying spin kick made for a pleasant sight. Even if, as a result, they flipped over my desk. Ah, there's my pencil box! Ah, I'll, I'll just let it happen today. We better get a CG of that. How could we not get a CG of the melee? That's a wasted opportunity. I set to work hastily watering everything, wanting nothing more to be done as soon than to be done as soon as possible. That should about do it. No sooner had I thought of that than I remembered that I had to water the teacher's curry vegetable garden too. I gave up, filled the can with water again, and headed behind the warehouse. There was a place. This was a place students didn't like to go. It was always damp here, and you couldn't discard the possibility of slugs and pill bugs being around. So when I ran across her in a place like that, I was surprised. What's wrong, Rika? Rika was just standing there like a puppet, devoid of life. We, we don't want to see CG of a girl in a skirt kicking. I don't want an upskirt photo, obviously. But, like, you could have just had, like, I don't know, like the Street Fighter, like, like, Satoko versus Rena. Like, that would have been a cool CG. I was the only one who was startled here. Rika didn't even seem to react to my appearance. Finally, she noticed me. Whoa! That seems like a... I don't think I've seen that sprite on uh, Rika before. This is a very serious expression for her. That looks pretty much like her normal expression. Okay. Maybe it's just this one. I don't remember her doing this in any of the previous ones. There was red under her eyes, stained with tears and dirt. Oh. She was, she was probably close with the mayor, wasn't she? There were blades of grass stuck in her hair, too, and her clothes looked as though she'd fallen to the ground. Rika-chan! 
Rika said it in the brightest voice she could as she managed she could manage as she rubbed her eyes. She didn't look anywhere near normal though. If she asks me if I had seen those two like, like again. <laughs> Whoa, uh hi. Um that's uh it's a little close there, Rika. I gotta say, this is making me a wee bit uncomfortable. Rika walked over and clung to me. At first I thought she was playing a trick on me. Eventually, however, I realized it was so I wouldn't run from the question she was about to ask, and I shuddered. She looked straight into my eyes. Her upturned eyes bored right into me. It was as though they were trying to pull the answer out of my own eyes without actually asking me the question. It was scary, so I averted my eyes from hers. Oh, is she about to go crazy? That'll probably be the creepiest part of the game if she goes crazy. Why does every- What? Was this publicly brought- Did we live stream this on YouTube or something? How does everybody know? <laughs> my body gave a jolt from its very core. Rika, who was clinging to me, might have felt my shiver. A nervous tingle crawled up my feet, and after going up my back and freezing my entire body, it made its way into my brain. Keiichi? You know, I kind of don't remember. My head began to throb. I don't... I don't understand anything. Mion asked me. Uisi-san asked me. Shion asked me. And now Rika was asking me. We thought nobody knew about what we did last night, but... In fact, everyone knew! They all knew. And they came to ask me. Again and again. Until I admitted it. When I thought about it, it was pretty clear the whole thing was out in the open. You can admit it to Rika. You can take her in a fight, worst case. After all, don't Tomotake-san and Takuno-san's deaths prove it? Keiichi? I... how should I respond? We never should have entered the Forbidden Storehouse. And even though I regretted it so much, was she saying it wasn't enough? However, I had all but decided what I was going to say. Oh. He's... Oh. Is he actually going to admit it? Oh, never mind! He's giving the same stupid excuse again! I kind of don't remember! Just as I had with all the others, I evaded the question. Rika stared at me with those innocent eyes. Her eyes were so painful that I had to look away. After a few moments of mutual silence, Rika released me. She said, smiling her usual smile. Then, t -t 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 -t, she went running off as if nothing had happened. As she retreated in silence, I could feel her accusing me. Rika chan! If she didn't hear my voice, then I was going to give up. However, she heard it. Rika swirled around and waited for me to continue. I was the one who had questions now. Still, asking any of them could be a, a half-assed way of admitting what I did. Nah, Rika -chan. If everyone knows anyway, then I should be able to at least ask this, right? Why is everyone asking me about the night of the festival? That evening. Had I done something that wrong? Maybe everybody noticed when you left. You're like, excuse me, part of me, gonna make out with my girlfriend. Excuse me, part of me, gotta leave the, the the right. Excuse me. Maybe it was blatantly obvious. I felt plenty sorry about it, and I only looked anyway. I didn't break anything or steal anything. Really? Still, Tomotake-san and Takano-san, they died so miserably. Since those two had come to such an end... There's obviously no way it would forgive only me. <laughs> Rika-chan cutely tilted her head in confusion and waited for me to say something. If I were to admit what happened that night, though, she might suddenly do a 180 as if flipping a switch. That would make sense. Rika was the Shrine Maiden. She was the least likely to forgive me for breaking the taboo, wasn't she? Upon reflection, wouldn't telling her 
be more terrifying than telling Mion or Isi-san? <sighs> Rika could just give up and leave, couldn't she? She didn't. She only... She only was quietly, quietly waiting for me to say it myself. Say it, Keiichi Maibara. If you really are sorry, then you should say so. Of course, it's normal to hesitate, given the crazy way Tomotake-san and Takano-san died. A pulping machine called Chaos was grinding up my brain. The juice run out of it, turned into big droplets of sweat, which began to fall. Keiichi? Rika suddenly straightened up, trying to pat me on the head. I had nothing to say to that. I lowered my head a little so that Rika's palm could reach it. She patted me kind of like one would a cat. Yeah, we played hide and seek there! My breath literally stopped. Rika, though, wasn't acting in a coercive way at all. Oh, is that how she's gonna spin it? Ne Neko? Rika knew. She realized I was in fear. I could tell she was desperately trying to choose the right words so that she wouldn't scare me. I appreciate that. The cat. It was clearly supposed to be Takano-san. Or wait, was it supposed to be me? Rika made a cute gesture like a ghost that was coming out to frighten me. She's like, no, it was literally a cat. <laughs> Rika still avoided saying it. The cat, though, was without a doubt me. Rika's a sweet girl. Maybe it was a desperate question to ask. I had sort of admitted to being the cat. <laughs> <laughs> in actuality, there was a real cat that broke in, in addition to us. Rika only knows about that, and she's just like, Hey, you know, I'm just wondering where my pet cat is. I lost it. Why is Cage being so weird? <laughs> Jeez, Rika-chan and I have put together an entire conversation using cat as the code word. I didn't say it directly, but I had already admitted it. I didn't want to end up like those two. I didn't want to be a sacrifice, like Shion said. That's what I thought, so I stubbornly remained silent. But now, that's enough. She's like, there are no dogs in this village. <laughs> After I said that, Rika's expression clouded over. She was trying to hide it, but I'd already noticed her eyes darkening. The silence was frightening, so I spurred her on. At that point, Rika grinned. <laughs> Thanks, I, I'll need your biceps. Huh? I thought for a moment that I'd misheard those words. So dependable they were. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. We've got a ten-year-old girl on our side. 
勘違いしてるだけなのだと思いますえそそんなに大変なことじゃないって猫さんの心配しすぎなのです僕がきっと何とかしてあげますですよリカ will do something about it I don't even know left from right at the moment so Rika didn't look all that dependable ちょっと大変ですけど頑張りますですよ<笑> She's like I'll pin it on someone else ファイト王なのです She'll pin it on the otakus <laughs> She clenched her fist and struck it in the air. Rika had said that the cat can just keep meowing. She said it to leave it all to her. Is that really all it took to resolve this whole thing? <laughs> I have political clout. Nipa! I had no idea what Rika was talking about anymore. She had been talking to me under the assumption that I was aware of certain things. So at first, I understood her. Around the middle, though, I stopped understanding anything. However, one thing I did know was to not worry and to leave it to her. Rika straightened up once again, petted me on the head, and smiled. I was so moved by that reassuring feeling that I couldn't help but start to cry. <laughs> ちょっとしたいたずらのつもりだったんだこんなことになるなんて全然猫さんは臆病すぎですだから見せたくなかったのです She was right It was far too shocking for someone to see based off of a little bit of interest alone That's why they made it so difficult to look at in the first place, wasn't it? リカちゃんその猫さんはどうなるんだろう忍び込んだ2匹の猫さんが She's like, wait, three cats were in! She only knew about one. I'd heard Tomotake san and Takano san's deaths were being kept a secret. Rika might not have known about it. Nope, she knows about it! I gave a start at the sudden mention of actual names. Though it's weird to do that at this point. What? <laughs> My. Spine froze again. Rika? What do you know? I don't know if she's trying to just reassure me or if she's like subtly threatening us. She said something so enormously terrifying without letting the smile on her face waver at all. Jokes on you, my bathtub is covered in grime. What?忘れるって言ったって。リカちゃんは知ってるんだろう。あの二人がどういう死に方を。どんな死に方をしてもそれは。<laughs> <laughs> Rika declared this in a flat voice. Nothing to do with me. So forget about it. The girl before me, she was innocent and lovable, and even seemed trustworthy. But suddenly she took on another dimension. Don't get involved with their deaths. I'll help you, Keiichi. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Rika's like, I played chapter one. I know what happens. <laughs> We're going to try changing things this time. <laughs> Those two contradictory statements twisted and distorted my image of the girl in front of me. Sh it might have been dangerous to mention Shion's name, but I couldn't stop myself from asking. Rika saw through everything anyway. There was no way I was going to fool her or keep anything from her at this point. <laughs> she's, keep, she's keeping up the cat metaphor. Rika appeared to think about this for a moment. It was hard for me to endure even this momentary silence. Uh oh. That could only be Mion. I recall being questioned by her yesterday. Keiichi, 
Not in a good mood. Those words sent a shiver through me. Rika knows so much more than it seems, I think. Mion was mad. She was mad that we entered the ritual storehouse. Oh. Oh, that's a new sprite right there. Dang! She looks angry in the OG art style. I feel like all of her sprites in the console one are just the same, though. Just like, I don't approve. Wow. Rika ended her sentence with such force that I couldn't say anything in response. Hey, Keiji Maibara. Don't disobey Rika right now. She's the only one who said she'll help me right now. I'll leave things to her, just as she said to. I mean, she even said that the cat should just keep meowing. I'll forget everything, like she said. I'll leave everything to her. I'll forget everything about Takano and Tomatake and what I did that night. Bro, how long does it take to water the vegetable garden? Just then, we heard a bell far away, marking the end of our lunch break. Keiichi? <laughs> As if she had noticed how miserable I was. About to leave everything to her and flee the scene, Rika called out to stop me. The misunderstanding dog. She put in a touch of cute sounding way, but the true meaning behind those words was an eerie one. The police officer. I'll kill the police. <laughs> どうして村長を噛んだのか僕噛むなら the sacrifices of that terrible calamity. She admitted that they, if they were to happen again, it would be she or I. This... I didn't know what the true meaning about the girl standing before me. My suspicion gave way to fear, and nearly began to change in anger. Was she... a savior who would protect me? Or a stranger trying to capture and kill me for the sake of a horrible tradition? If Rika tried to capture us, we can... We can overpower her, okay? At the end of the day, she is still like a 10-year-old girl, and we're like a 15-year-old guy. It's not even a contest. What did she say? Oh, uh... <laughs> she was saying, if the dog that bit the mayor was to bite anyone, it should have bit the trickster cat first. Basically implying she's like, I don't know why the mayor died. It should have been you who died instead, pretty much. <laughs> I had no idea what was true. <laughs> Rika bowed so quickly it looked like her head had been pulled downward. Still, she was right. I was cowering. I could distinctly feel my body shaking violently. So when Rika reached her hand out to pat me on the head, I pulled away without thinking. Oh. Uh, oh Rika made a very sad face, but I couldn't bring myself to put out my head for her again. Alright! Well! That was a good scene. <laughs> that day, Rika said she wasn't feeling up for club activities, so she suggested we don't bother. There's always vetoes when someone doesn't feel up for it. <laughs> Rika? Low-key the most interesting character to me. Because she 100% knows, like, a lot of what's going on behind the scenes. But she's putting up this facade of, like, I'm innocent. <sighs> like, there's something going on with that, I think. I don't know if she's, like, behind everything or not. Or if she just, like, is kind of in the know. Being that she's literally the only member of the Furude family left. But 
She seems very nice, so I do enjoy Rika. She's a good character. Oh, they ever sounded disappointed. The big sister cat is not in a good mood. I remembered Rika's words and quietly stole a glance at Mion's expression. If I could forget the way she questioned me yesterday, though, her behavior was the same as it always was.